Hey guys, I'm Adrian. And I'm Jay. We run Fable Forest Films. Right now, we're totally independent. But what's the dream? Making crazy awesome film and television for the biggest studios. This podcast is our journey. What up, my homies? Hello. And welcome to First Frames First. Episode 76. Hey, yo. My name is Adrian Constant. I'm Jason Green. And uh, we are your hosts for this little episode, which is going to be brief. So firstly, Jay, yeah. talk to me. What's happening in the world of Fable Forest Films and all, thing movie, all things movie related? Well... The projects. I think we're mostly eight limbsing right now. Mm-hmm. Um, so we have uh, passed a hard drive to a junior editor. Mm-hmm. Uh, to help with one of the episodes. Yeah. Uh, so we shall see. We've put some dollar bills in this human being's hand. So, get moving. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I find you. It was good. We uh, we had him over to your place. You kind of showed him the timeline and how to how, how you're working through yeah. everything. And, yeah. and uh, everything seemed to go well. He's looking to impress you. And, yeah. And uh, we'll see what happens. So it's good because we we need more editing help. 100 yeah. percent that for us that's kind of where everything slows down that's kind of the bottleneck mm -hmm. is uh once we've done the thing then putting it into the computer and turning it into the finalized thing it for us it takes a long time we also had a small problem uh we were going to shoot the intro for mm -hmm. art of eight limbs and mm -hmm. and uh we've been hoping to have somebody involved yeah uh, uh just as such a good dude uh yeah his name is Stefan, and uh, but he moved to Ottawa to do some training, and he's not available until March. And until March, we I started t chatting with him. He felt bad. I felt bad, and I was like, uh, you know, he goes. He said, "I thought you guys just forgot." I said, "No, we're just, we were moving along, but yeah. uh, it's good to have a reminder now and again." that the universe does not revolve around us solely. around us and other people have <laughs> lives and they have to go and do things that yeah, they have yeah. to do so but um it's looking like uh unfortunately sorry Stefan, but we are going to get a replacement because we have to move quickly i i don't i don't think we can wait for march i i i fully expect to be finished within the month of february january yes february. Fair enough. yikes okay. so like 10 days left in january i know i know so um but uh, we have a cool replacement, uh, Pat. Do you have pronounce his last name? No, no. But his name is Pat, and uh, Pachulnik. Pachulnik. He's uh, he's gonna be. He fights out of TKO, and uh, he's actually headlining a pretty big MMA event at the Odd in Kitchener. So yeah, he's uh, he's a good dude also, and and he's probably. I I I would say I don't know, uh, but I would say he's probably one of the most well established MMA guys in the Tri Cities for sure. Yeah. If so not the most, we will uh, be uh, we'll be filming him on Sunday. Yeah, so pretty exciting. And uh, this little intro sequence is going to be very dark, and it's going to be uh, just just some really cool highlights. And uh, the intro sequence itself, I have titled, we have titled, the Muay Thai Nightmare. So you just think Get about that for, for a second, okay? Get ready for it. So, um, anyways, yeah, that's good. Um, I am trying to cut an episode myself. Mm -hmm. Not the fight sequence, but the rest of it. I'm the worst editor, I swear to God. <laughs> but uh, I'm working my way through it. Um, it's been some time since I've done anything other than slap two ends on the end of a podcast, so... Uh, yeah. Yeah, 100%. It's, it's cool, we've actually got... We actually have four four human beings that are just chipping away at things. I'm, I'm like doing the main push 100%. but then we have like we said the junior editor and Jay is working on an episode so he's trying to get it like if Jay can get the episode like you know like 60% of the way there it just helps with the time with the amount of time yeah. and then Connor Jay's boy is also working on one episode so you know it's we're fun. moving along yeah yeah other than that we're just waiting to get through that so that we can get to shifted so that we can get to the fictional podcast yeah that's the game plan yeah for sure and the fictional podcast um, the, uh, you know, the money uh, has not arrived, but 
we're gonna I'm gonna check in on that. Um, but really, yeah. the the first piece of that puzzle, and uh, and it's time this week to start hitting a, a bunch of various people that we know, some of the the Facebook groups that we know, yeah, and start the discussion around looking to see who would like to right. submit some entries and write. Okay. So we we also we should also and this is something I wanted to tell you before we should also hunt down a couple of benchmarks for what a good story is. Mm -hmm. And before people dive in, mm -hmm. we should be like these mm -hmm. five are excellent even if we've listened to them, right? Right. These if we can make things like this, right. We're we're gonna be in good we're gonna ways. be good. So I, I think rather than have someone do something and we're like this is completely wrong, we actually give them something that they can use. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So uh, is that that's pretty much it for our current update? Yeah. Um, let me just think. Website. No. Okay. The 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 so the update for our website is that <laughs> still underway. Well, our website designer guy uh, on Jim is on holiday. His first ever holiday. So he's in Cuba. Mm -hmm. um, and I think he actually gets back Thursday, okay. so um, so we'll be we'll be cracking on there, um, and yeah, it'll be done as soon as ongoing, ongoing. Um, before we get to the main the main segment. segment today, which is going to be our picks for a couple of the Oscar nominations, That's right. we'll talk about it. Um, I just wanted to mention uh, Adrian's sister in Scotland. We put out a post mm -hmm. um, a couple days ago, a couple weeks ago, about uh, her book that had uh, the, like a, the, cover, the cover contest. The cover competition. Um, she did really well there, and I think she just released on Sunday, last Sunday? Or, or Friday. I think she did it on Sunday, but yes, uh, her own podcast, mm -hmm. so <sighs> competition. Hers is probably better already, like instantly the first <laughs> Instantly the first better. Episode. It's shorter, yeah, between sure 7 and 11 minutes. There you go. So uh, it is called the Waffle Free. The Waffle Free podcast. Story Waffle Story Free. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we'll put a link to it uh, in our show notes. Um, yeah. Go and take a listen. They're really short. Really short stories, between seven and eleven minutes. The, the amount of time it would take you to drink a coffee. That's the idea. Boom. All right. Okay. So Jason Oscars. Oscars. What do you want to start with here? Let's just start from the top. No, let's start. Let's start with best picture. Oh, best picture. Okay. Oh wait, no. Or shall we leave that for the end? I think leave it for the end. Okay. Let me run through. I'll run through this one. Okay. So the first, the first nomination we're going to do is actor in a leading role. We got Antonio Banderas in Pain and Glory. We got Leonardo DiCaprio in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Adam Driver in Marriage Story. Joaquin Phoenix in The Joker or Joker, and Jonathan Price in The Two Popes. So, what do you think? First of all, did you watch the Ricky Gervais Golden Globes opening? I watched some of the opening, yeah, yeah. It was good. He's harsh. He's Woo! excellent. We might have to try to find the uh, YouTube video for that and post it in the show yeah, notes, yeah, yeah. too. If you haven't watched it... It's good. It's hunt good. it down and give it a watch. Yeah. He's pretty funny. Um, uh, I'm going to go with... I can see your tick there. I'm going to go with the Joker. Me too. I'm going to go with Joaquin Phoenix. Me too. I've seen The Joker four times in the theater. Oh, I just love that movie. So That's more times than I've seen Frozen in the theater. Frozen 2 in the theater. How many times have you seen Frozen 2 in the theater? I've seen it three times. My the, girls have seen even, it five times. He doesn't even take his girls. He just goes to Frozen <laughs> 2. So I just, we just, my girls are just old enough to kind of sit through the movie. Like the two-year-old will sit through a movie. She maybe has to go for a walk halfway through the movie to like calm down and relax and she gets a bit antsy and maybe she walks up and down the seats a little bit. But like, it, we, we, here we go on Saturdays and we, we sneak some snacks in. Mm -hmm. But the prices are reduced to, for the kids' movies to uh, seven bucks. So we go for like 21 bucks, the three of us can go. And then we take our own snacks. And so... We've been going every weekend because I have I've so deprived of going to the cinema that I okay, have so well, much let me tell you something. to do. Family favorites at Cineplex, mm -hmm. Waterloo Galaxy, mm -hmm. on Saturdays at eleven are two dollars and fifty cents. You can't take your own snacks though, can you? Probably not, and it won't be frozen too every single time. 
No, I, I mean, we last week we tried to go to a different movie. Couldn't, we couldn't. We, couldn't. we just ended up in Frozen 2. Okay, here we go. <laughs> okay, so, so we're we'll both go with the Joker. Joker. All right. Uh, actor in a supporting role. Now, Tom Hanks in A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood, he plays Mr. Rogers. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't he be... It's weird. The, he's yeah. not the leading... I, I haven't seen it, so no. I assume it's a movie... About someone else about, about him? Else. M oh, maybe it's, some I did it's see someone the re someone remembering him. No, no, I saw the trailer. It's like a, it's like a dad who's going through some bad stuff and meets Mister Rogers or something. Like Anyways, okay. So, so a little bit of a memory card full problem. Uh, we don't have our usual memory card, so uh, Sorry, two gigs. My bad. Two gigs, ten minutes. That's fine. Okay, let's hurry up. Okay. So, I was an actor in a supporting role. Tom Hanks, Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood, Anthony Hopkins, The Two Popes, Al Pacino and The Irishman, Joe Pesci, The Irishman, Brad Pitt, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. What are you saying? I'm going to say Brad Pitt. Me too. Really? Yeah. I think, he, I think he's going to get it. I, awesome. I think everybody loves him so much. Like every, I think the whole world really loves Brad Pitt, and they would just love to see him take home an Oscar. Also, he was great in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Did you watch it yet? Oh, man. It's queued, up on, it's queued up on my Google Play. I'm really I did really like it. Some people did not like it, but, you know, what do you got to do? Okay, okay, actress in a leading role. Actress in a leading, leading role. Cynthia Erivo in Harriet Scarlett Johansson in Marriage Story. I don't know how to... Sasha Jay Orice Ronan. In the little in, oh so, Sayers Ronan, little woman, yep. Charlize Theron, Bombshell, Renee Zellweger, and Judy. Okay, now, what, who are you choosing? I'm going with Cynthia Erivo and Harriet. Probably the smart move. It looked it looked like an f excellent movie. Yeah, I'm gonna go with Renee Zellweger in Judy Garland. In Judy. Yeah, that was this is this is gonna be tough. Has she won before? Probably. Did she win? She probably won for Jerry Maguire. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, Google. Has Renee Zellweger won an Academy Award? Yeah. Cold Mountain. Academy. That is an excellent movie. I haven't seen it. Oh. Anne likes it though. Okay, yeah. moving on. So I'm so you picked uh, Cynthia Erivo mm -hmm. and I picked Renee Zellweger. Actress in a supporting role: Kathy Bates, Richard Jewell, Laura Dern, Marriage Story, Scarlett Johansson, Jojo Rabbit, Florence, P little woman, sorry, Margot Margot Robbie in Bombshell. Is that Florence Pugh? Not sure. <laughs> P U G H. <laughs> Unsure. Don't laugh. It's, Come on. I think it's her name is Pooh. It's. <laughs> Poo, pu, poo. Like tough. Yeah. Uh. Okay, very cool. Um, I, What are you going with? I'm going with Scar Jo. You're going to go with Scar Jo and Jojo jo jo Rabbit? Rabbit? Shoot. I'm going to go with Margot Robbie. Okay. All right, animated feature film. How to Train Your Dragon, The Hidden World. I Lost My Body, Klaus, Missing Link, Toy Story 4. I chose Klaus. Me too. I love that movie. Man, that was a good movie. If I, you guys haven't seen Klaus on Netflix, I know we're past Christmas. I don't know if they've removed it and they're going to put it back on mm, next Christmas. Yeah. But you should go watch it because it's amazing. And it was hand-drawn. So it's it's like what animation would be, what the, where animation would be if computer CGI hadn't come in. Mm. And um, honestly, I have been thinking about getting some posters of the movie frames so there are certain movie frames that are so beautiful to me i'd like to get it made into a little poster and put it up on the wall i think it's just incredible hmm. i love that movie so we both chose that one all right we're skipping over cinematography and costume design we're going to do you want to go to directing or do you want to go to vfx let's do vfx first okay so uh, we're skipping a bunch. Documentaries, film editing, international, makeup and hair, original score and original song. Uh, stuff we have, stuff we have, like, we have very little, uh, like, we should not be making these. We shouldn't be making decisions at all. Yeah. For anything. But for Everything. that, for that other particular stuff, we should definitely not. We know very little. Uh, okay, VFX. The... 
nominees are Avengers Endgame, The Irishman, I suppose, for facial features. Yeah, making them uh, young again. I did watch The Irishman. Mm-hmm. I have watched half of The Irishman. It's long. <laughs> Here's the thing. There's other three-hour movies. So was Avengers Endgame. So was Lord of the Rings. Yeah. But The Irishman took me a couple sittings. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> the Lion King, 1917, and Star Wars Rise of Skywalker. All right. I... I'm going with Star Wars. Rise You're going to take it with Skywalker. Star Yeah? Yeah. I mean, the VFX are crazy. Crazier than Endgame? Yes. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it to Endgame. Okay. Has the Marvel has the Marvel Universe taken an Oscar for VFX before? Because mm-hmm. if they haven't, they're gonna get this one mm. because it's the last it's one. The last thing. I mean, the Rise of Skywalker is the last one, also. This is like a battle royale here. So we'll see. Okay. Original screenplay. Okay. Now, I have been reading these screenplays. How I, many? How many have you read out of the five? Of these five, one. Okay. But you know what? <laughs> I've been reading the screenplays. How many? I, I don't know why Ad Astra is not in here. Like, I thought I was reading the uh, adapted screenplay. Yeah, I thought I was reading the nominated screenplays in Ad Astra, which was the Brad Pitt movie. Mm-hmm. It was the one I just finished last night. Okay. Anyway. So we have Knives Out, Marriage Story, 1917, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and Parasite. I'm These are the original screenplays. I am going to give it to Parasite. Okay, tell us. You love that movie. I just love that movie. So that's a, it's a movie, uh, it's a Korean movie made, um, I, I, I'm sorry, I don't know the director's name, but I have watched the movie, loved the movie. You're kind of sitting there and you're like, well, what the fuck? And then you're like, oh shit. And it just rocks you. And so I really enjoyed it. I thought it was excellent. And I completely understand why this is making it into the English language side of the portion of the competition for the hmm. Academy Awards. Okay. I think it's pretty excellent. Okay. I'm going to go with Knives Out. I loved that movie. Yeah. It was so much fun. It was like a PG murder mystery, and yeah. I just had a great time watching it. And I think that it was a very cleverly written. I think it was pretty good. I read the screenplay. It was good. Cool. Okay. Directing. Mm-hmm. The Irishman, Joker... 1917, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Parasite. Lots of repeats here. Uh What are you choosing? I think I'm going to... Once again, the fact that Parasite has been nominated and it's a Korean movie, this is huge. This is like breaking up some serious boundaries. Um, But I'm going to go with 1917. So am I. I think the the sheer scale of the movie, it's spectacular. It's incredible. It was unbelievable. Yeah. It's like a feat. It's a cinematic feat. Yeah, you know what I mean. To, like to be able to choreograph those huge battle scenes in single shots. Yeah, I mean cinematography. It's probably going to take that as well. If I, would I, just, if I, had I would, guess. But, yeah, me too. But uh, okay, I, like, I also like, chose 1917. Yeah, like like the Irishman. I don't know. I don't think you have to direct those guys. But also, but also, I mean, I don't know. The story didn't grab me so much. I I, I kind of feel like. It has the it has it's this movie that's coming with the weight of all the names mm-hmm. that's driving it through these things. I, I think it was like revisiting the old school, what they've done before. Yeah. You know what I mean? Putting an exclamation point on the on the genre that Martin Scorsese Which, is famous. I'm going to tell you something. I'm happy they made it. I'm yeah. happy that all those guys yeah. got a big payday. Mm-hmm. I hope because well, I love yes. them all. Yeah, and so and this is them doing their their thing, right? Totally. 100%. Yeah. Best picture. First of all, I saw Ford versus Ferrari. Now, I'm not going to pick it as best picture. Have you seen it? No. Oh, my God. Good? It's so good. It's such a feel-good movie. Christian Bale. It's, oh, yeah. I loved it. I loved it. That's cool. Ford versus Ferrari. Who's the director? Who is the director I for that? Do you don't know? know. I apologize. Okay. The Irishman, Jojo Rabbit, Joker, Little Women, Marriage Story, 1917, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and Parasite. So, best picture, Oscar this year what do you think I mean the way that my directing has leaned towards I'm going to pick it, it. I should pick 1917 I 
just really like I just really like Parasite. Wow. That's saying a lot. Yeah, it's just it's ju it just depends it depends on the, the the way that you decide to look at it because a competition for making a movie is kind of silly because if you look at it from a pure, from a spectacle point of view then looking at 1917 1917 is not really about who it is about a what it's like this guy's got to run through the there sh through, through the, the shit. Sh through the shit he's got to get from here to there and you kind of know who he is a little bit but more you're just the grit and resilience of this character Whereas Parasite really is about these people who do this really sort of crazy shit. Okay, we're back. We're back. Sorry, guys. We ran out of space again because we waffle. This waffle podcast. Guys. Did your sister name her podcast because we waffle? Maybe. I don't think it's a direct attack at us. But it might. The Waffle Free Podcast? Yeah. That's a jab right in the kidneys. It is. All right. Did we so, tell you guys to go and listen to her podcast? Scratch that shit. Okay, best picture. Did you say what you were... Choosing? No, I didn't. You go with yours. Oh, what I was saying with best picture was that I'm just... Like, I think 1917, because you can't... Like, a competition in the creative space is very difficult. Because it's such a... Paris, in my mind, Parasite, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, 1917, Joker. These are all so different. Like, if you chose to which look at it is the best yeah and it's not really a best it's like which one rung your bell more and the thing is different things ring different people's bell more so like it's really tough it just i'm guessing right now on like the tide who what what people are gonna what what people are gonna appreciate and i think maybe i'm gonna go with 1917 because of my previous thing but i wouldn't be surprised if parasite came in and i also wouldn't be surprised if Joker came in. Well, what is your what is your prediction? I'm gonna give it to Joker, and it's probably not gonna win. But I just love that movie a lot. Mm -hmm. I thought, I, I that's what I, I've seen it four times because I just I've enjoyed it so much in the theater yeah. every time. I've loved every piece of it. Mm -hmm. So um, that's that's what's uh, winning Best Picture for me. Although. I loved 1917, and I mm -hmm. really enjoyed Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. But I wouldn't. I might go back and see Once Upon a Time in Hollywood again, and I might go back and see 1917 again. Mm -hmm. But I don't think four times. Yeah. So for you, Joker's Joker did really well. Yeah. I just think I just think that the that that the the set pieces in 1917 where they put that together. It's just Amazing. so incredible that it kind of, like on that, if you're looking at it from that angle, it kind of blows the other movies out of the water. You're like, when you have a guy who's sprinting across a field and there are, there are yes. men getting shot around him and there are explosions and the take has been like, what? how long has the take been? Like 10 minutes or something mm -hmm. like that? He's been hoofing it through this region, this area, and everything is set up. Yeah. It's just, it is something very special. Yeah. Because, I mean, it's amazing when you see it in a, in, a, in a movie like Birdman. It is amazing. This single shot because of the, the choreography in a war movie. And it just makes you feel like you're there. Right? That, that's, that's, where, that's why I chose Best Director as 1917. Mm -hmm. I just think, I don't know if Best Picture should always be the one that costs the most. And was the biggest spectacle. I'm not sure. One hundred percent. Although, sometimes it probably should be. I don't know. Yeah. But but 1917 not only probably cost the most, and was the hugest. Mm -hmm. But I mean, they also spent their money really wisely. It was amazing. It was so, a great movie. Um, it's hard to say. So, uh, those are our picks. Um, you can watch the Oscars live Sunday night, February the 9th, eight Eastern. And we will probably watch them also and maybe live Instagram or something like that. Do something we'll crazy see, with the we'll socials. We'll see how our, uh, how our picks go. Now, I'm going to obviously ch choose more of the winners than you. I'm just saying. What happens? Who? If I pick more of the winners, then what does that mean? What do you have to do? I mean, it means very little. Do you have to do, you have to do 100 push-ups? 
No, that would be terrible. That would be terrible for everyone in the room. <laughs> no. Anyways, I don't know. I don't know what we'll do. Okay, that's it for uh, this episode. Thanks, guys, for sticking with us, and we'll see you again in a couple weeks. All right, dream big, work hard. Bye, guys. Really hope you enjoyed the show. Wherever you watched or listened, please leave us a comment or a review. We really want to hear from you. Share the show with a friend. You know they'll love us. Head over to our website, thefableforest.com. There's all kinds of great stuff. Poke around. Check it out. See you all again in a couple weeks.